I, I believe with all my heart, and, and I hope I'm not wrong because I'm, I'm really dedicating a lot of my life to it. I believe with all my heart uh, that God wants His people to be transformed and changed and experience the life that Jesus came and modeled for us and invited us into. I believe that. And I also believe that that happens primarily in the, through relationships. Maybe exclusively through relationships. Uh, if you don't think so, just go into your little Bible computer and Google on the Bible one another. And see how many times you see the phrase one another, one another, one another, one another. One another doesn't work outside of relationships. And you know, maybe if we lived 60 years ago and we all still had a front porch and we spent three and a half hours together every Sunday afternoon eating a meal and sitting and visiting, maybe those relationships would happen very naturally and very organically and we wouldn't have any kind of organization. But we live in a day and time when we communicate by Facebook and email and texting and tweeting and Twittering and darning more front porches. And so if we're going to have the kind of relationships that God uses to bring life transformation, it requires us putting some effort and some thought into how to do that. Make no mistake, we're not taking the place of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's got to work, but really what we're doing is getting the barriers out of the way so the Holy Spirit can work. And that's what we want to do is get the barriers out of the way and then present ourselves to God and let the Holy Spirit work. I want to visit with you a little bit tonight. Uh, I'd rather talk about the kingdom and things like that and, and, uh, and go on and on. Uh, you'll never believe the uh, first time I had lunch with Joshua and Daniel before he was hired. Uh, Daniel and I ate everything on our plate and Joshua was like to start eating because he was still talking. And uh, so uh, you can tell he had, certainly has some verbal gifts. Uh, I did offer him to eat all of his food, but he stopped and ate it. But what I want to talk to you tonight is not that exciting, just put some, some nitty great details of group leadership and facilitating a group. Uh, one thing you had Ronnie and Gloria talked on um, starting on time. I've been visiting some groups. If I haven't made it through a group yet, uh, hang in there. I'm on my way. Uh, start on time. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is this is the friendliest church I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I mean, people just want to talk and visit. And uh, start on time doesn't mean start visiting on time. Okay? It means start group on time. And I'm going to give you a little suggestion. Most groups need a very distinct way of transitioning into group. You notice, uh, when we start this meeting, and we always start with prayer. That's because we believe in prayer, but it's also okay everybody shut up because we're fixing to start the meeting. <laughs> Is that okay if we just say that? I mean, what happened tonight? Everybody's in here, we're talking, visiting, had seen you. That's good stuff, but we got to start the meeting. If I just stand up and start talking, and you know, about 10 or 15 minutes later, about lying down, and start listening. So just think ahead. How are we going to officially start tonight? It might be uh, ask somebody to pray. One that's doing all the talking. Okay? Ask them to pray. Uh, you may have a song that you start with. You may ask somebody ahead of time. Say, hey, Larry, this week, would you stand up and read a verse out of this week's scripture reading to get us started? You know, everybody in the room knows what? We're starting the room. Okay, now you want to go back to that other stuff? You can go back to it after we what? In the group. So not only start on time, but have some way that everybody knows. Uh, maybe have everybody stand up for a moment and speak a prayer or something. But it's just a good way. I mean, you don't have to be a jerk. Say, all right, everybody shut up. Everybody shut up. We're going to be spiritual people. Uh, so <laughs> starting on time, very important. But, but just have some kind of starting sequence. We talked last week about active listening. Anybody want to venture a guess? You know, what's the difference between just good listening and active listening? Interaction. 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 That's a good word for it. Uh, in active listening, I'm saying something that lets you know I've heard you. Okay? I can pretend to listen. I'm a judge. Okay? <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes your eyes are just glazing over. And you're like, oh, I've heard that eight times. Let's, one more time, please. Uh, <laughs> but in active listening, what I'm going to say is, Ronnie, it sounds like you're really upset about what happened at work last week. That you're getting kind of frustrated there. Well, 
And Ronnie may say, no, that really wasn't what I was saying. I wasn't saying I was frustrated, but it's just my heart hurting for those guys because God really wants better for them than they want for themselves. And so, well, I see, you're, you're trying to see how can you bring the kingdom of God to that situation. Well, it may take me four or five times, but finally, he's going to know I heard him. See, that's active listening. It's very important. It's a very deep need within us to know we have been heard. Okay, so it's not just listening well, but it's listening and interacting so that people know they've been heard. We talked last week about that. If you didn't get the handout, I, I had some extras and I had them out to bring and I forgot. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna, I'll email everybody the handout on active listening. Uh, we tape recorded it. Bad news, Pastor Daniel. Uh, it was not equipment error. I think it was operator error on both of our parts that uh, the tape recorder was on, but there was a switch on the microphone cord uh, that when you turned it off, the tape recorder still ran, just no sound came into it. And so I listened, uh, uh, I was pretty frustrated. I kept thinking, even it's gonna come on, it's gonna come on. So anyway, if you missed it, yes. She has an active listening, you don't get that copy. Uh, yeah, how many people here don't have the handout on active listening? Yeah, we'll only make eight or ten of those and we'll just hand them out tonight. Uh, so anyway, we don't have an audio of it. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, if you have the handout, that'll get you off to a good start. We talked last week about personal prayer requests. I'm telling you, uh, for those of you that are filling out reports and giving them to me, those are a big part of my life. I, I appreciate it. And, and I tell you, literally, I've sat and wept over some of those reports. Uh, just to read what God's doing, uh, to read people that are putting some things into practice that we're talking about, and to read the results. Uh, I was at lunch with Pastor Daniel this week and told him one of the stories out of one of the reports. And, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that guy eight years ago wouldn't have been teared up in some way, but God's remarkable really his heart. And, uh, and he was sitting there just tears. Uh, hearing what God did. And, and it came through somebody having the boldness to step out and try something different. And they put something in place. And so we talked about the value of personal prayer requests last week. Uh, it's very important. Why do you think it's important that we move from superficial, remote prayer requests to what is really going on in our life? Why does it matter? Anybody? Yeah? Okay, it opens up intimacy. I, I can get to know the people. That's good. Why is that? Why else might it matter if we pray about what's really going on? Why not? Oh, prayer matters. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Our prayer requests don't reflect that we think prayer matters. I also have a good friend of mine that I've traveled missions with, and we have a mutual friend. We've traveled together. I, I went to have lunch with a guy this week, and he said, well, I can't. I'm going up to another town, and and he said, Mike's very sick. I said, oh, what's going on? Well, he's, he's doing very bad. He's got diabetes. I said, well, he didn't even, I didn't even know. He said, well, he doesn't want anybody to know. And I'm telling you, this is a man of God, and I know he believes in prayer. But he doesn't want anybody to know he's sick. There's a disconnect there. There's a disconnect. See, we say, oh, I believe in prayer, but I'm not going to tell you what I really need you to pray about. See, well, what happens? I'm reinforcing to myself subconsciously that I really don't believe in prayer. Because if I did, I'd tell you what I really need you to pray about. And so we just keep reinforcing that, that we really don't think it matters. So very important. And uh, along those lines, we've talked about uh, it'll, prayer makes a difference. Talk about personal growth. Growth comes through the intimacy Jesus talking about. Uh, one of the best things we can do, I think, is, is the smaller group breakouts. I know some of y'all tried that. And uh, the truth is, there's things I would not share with this room that I might share with two or three people. And it, it's not any particular two or three, but just there's something about a smaller group. I know the leads are doing that and having some success, yes. Uh, so uh, just reducing the size will help a lot. <clears throat> some of you, that's, it's hard because you're down here at the church and you got one room and there's nowhere to go. And, I don't have any great solutions for you, you know, if you're stuck in that situation. But if at all possible, I think it's important. Uh, another thing that personal prayer requests will help with is it'll reduce gossip. 
Oh, surely we don't have any gossip. Uh, well, look in your Bible. Gossip appears on some pretty healthy list of sins. I mean, it's down there some heavy-duty stuff. But it's kind of one of those uh, tolerable sins. Well, if I'm telling you how I need you to pray for me, I'm a lot less likely to be telling you how you need to pray for so-and-so in the church because I saw him staggering out of the bar over on Simmons when I was driving home from work and then bless her heart, we just need to pray for him. Uh, well, maybe you do need to pray for him. Talk to God about it. But don't talk to everybody else about it. Don't talk to God. Tell everybody else what you need prayer for. See, so now we're not getting into this gossip mode uh, and cloaking it with prayer requests. Uh, so how do we do it? We, we can model it. You know, our prayer requests need to uh, model what we're asking the other people to do. Uh, we can learn to redirect it. Okay? Redirect it. Uh, Rob comes in and says, hey, we need to pray. There's a guy at work and his son has cancer. That's serious. We want to pray for that guy. Absolutely. But how can we pray for you this week, Rob? You're the one. I mean, you're talking to the guy. You're working with him. How can we lift you up? How can God inter intervene in your life right now to bring the kingdom of God where you're at? See, I've redirected it. I've acknowledged it's important. I've redirected it. How can we pray for you tonight? Because we love you. And we want to be able to intercede for you. And uh, if, if you're using the, the two-year curriculum, uh, I'm trying to make that easier for you because there's a place where they write out ahead of time what their prayer request is, and it progressively challenges them to reach a little deeper. Let's say you've been meeting for 13 weeks. It's time they got a little more personal. And uh, then after a while, say, what direction should we pray? And so uh, if you're in a curriculum group, take advantage of that. When you get ready to go to prayer requests, turn to that page. Everybody turn to page 72. And uh, let's read what it says about prayer requests this week. Just use the curriculum and those notes to help the people be prompted to go a little deeper. Uh, if you're having a problem with prayer requests just turning into long, drawn-out stories, anybody ever read those? Uh, wow, I got a response there. Uh, think outside the box. Pass out three by five index cards and tell people to write out your prayer request and bring it next week. And then pair people off and uh, y'all pray, hand them the card and say, here, pray. I don't need to add anything to it. Wrote it down. Okay, if you can't put it on a three by five index card, you're probably saying too much, even if you are a detailed person. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so try something like that. Go around the circle. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jim. Jim, would you read your prayer requests? And what if I just told me? I don't want to hear your prayer request. I want you to read what you wrote down. Why well, didn't write anything down? Well, thank God you don't need anything, Jim. What's yours? <laughs> okay? So uh, think outside the box, see? And, and so you can really get that uh, more, more personal. Now, one thing I'm going to ask you to do is I want you to go home and I want you to role play doing that. Okay, with your spouse or somebody else in the group, get with them. And, and this is going to sound hokey, but, but bear with me. Uh, I want you to just go home, and, and Steve and June could do it. And, and this is what it looked like. Steve would say, uh, okay, I'm going to share my prayer request. And he'd say, well, my neighbor's got a brother that lives in Wichita, and he's got a neighbor that needs a job. And June's going to say, well, that's nice, Steve. How can we pray for you today? See? Because you need to practice letting the words roll off your mouth so you know you can say it. Okay? Practice it. And uh, practice saying, hey, I, I really care about you. I, I'd really like to pray for you this week. I mean, now, this sounds hope. I'm going to ask you if, you if you practice it. So practice it. And let those words come out of your mouth. You'll see how easy it is. Uh, somebody says, hey, I need you to pray for me. I'm really having a tough time at work. Well, how should we pray? You've been praying about it. What direction do you have? How can we agree with you in prayer? Well, I'll just put the responsibility on them to come in here with some direction. What am I doing? I'm helping them grow up into mature sons and daughters of God. Uh, they're talking to God too. What are they hearing? Okay, the last thing I'll move on to is talkers. I know, know y'all had some with long prayer requests. Does anybody have anybody 
and don't name any names. Anybody in your group that talk, you would call them a talker. If you don't have your hand up, uh, these people will give you one. <laughs> no, really. Anybody ever deal with that problem? Okay. Well, I just want to know what we're talking about. Uh, how many people here are the talk? No. <laughs> Okay, number one, very important. This is this is your handout. So just uh, sit back, listen. You have a handout. Look, check your own motives. Okay, if it ever takes a tick out of you because somebody's talking too much, at least as a starting point, ask God to reveal to you why it irritates you so bad. Talkers irritate me because they don't give me enough time to talk. <laughs> I'll be honest. Well, maybe. I got to deal with something. So before I ever think about dealing with them, I said, just ask God, that why, why is that irritating you so much? Well, they're not showing me enough respect. I'm the leader. They need to listen when I'm talking. What? Check your own motives, okay? I'm not saying that to be mean, but a lot of times something that irritates us and bothers us is bringing something out that's inside of us that needs to come out so it can get gone. Okay, so that may be kind of a barometer that shows you deal with something. Uh, second, just realize there are different people, uh, personalities, temperaments. Understand that because if you're a person of few words, then it's just hard to understand how on earth they can spend so much time telling that story. So I'm going to talk about how to deal with them, but, but first just realize we're not all cut from the same cloth. Uh, if you really have an issue going on in your group, this is a very opportune time for you to consider coming in and saying, hey, they've been teaching on something in our leaders meeting and they make some suggestions we're going to try it in our group. And under C, I have you may need some group ground rules. If you really got a problem going uh, with talking too much, uh, then uh, some of these suggestions might work for you. You just come in and say, hey, and, and you're not being mean to anybody. You say, hey, they're talking on our leaders meeting. We're going to try something for the next couple months. Uh, nobody can talk a second time until everybody's got to talk the first time. Well, <laughs> I mean, can you just see them like going, yes. <laughs> I mean, they want to say something, but they don't want to use up their one term yet, you know? So, uh, or if you have somebody that's married to somebody that's quiet, you may say, nobody can talk until their spouse has also gotten a chance to talk. Well, see, they'll be elbowing their their husband or wife say, right, say something, say something, I want to talk again. But, but really, some ground rules like that uh, may be appropriate. Uh, you may have to talk about uh, having a rule. And, and this is a great time to do something just because you get to say, hey, you know, we had leaders meeting, Dennis talked about this, and they gave us a handout. Just articulate a rule that people don't interrupt each other. It, it grieves me to hear somebody talking about something that's very near and dear to their heart and two people over here chatting about something. Uh, no, it just shouldn't happen. If we talk about love one another, what does love look like in action? It looks like you shutting up and listening to the person that's talking. That's serious. We, we think love is some warm, fuzzy feeling. Love is caring enough about somebody that you don't have to make the little side joke while they're talking. See, that's what love looks like. So it's a good time. If you got a serious issue in the group, good time. Say, well, uh, you know, they, they talk about this at the meeting, and it just kind of seems like uh, this would be a good idea. Let's just have a little, we don't interrupt one another. Uh, you know, they teach this to the second graders. Why well, get the adults one? Don't interrupt. Uh, maybe a, a time where uh, you just try to go around the circle. Now, if you're doing the subject curriculum, you may already be kind of going around the circle, so it's not as, uh, as much of an issue. But there's some quiet people that are not going to talk until they get an opportunity. We're going to deal with that separately, the quiet people issue. But, uh, or you may uh, have an issue. Some of you may have had this. Somebody has the same issue and the same problem. It takes about eight or ten minutes every week to go through it again, and you've heard it 472 times. And they start in and eyeballs start rolling. Well, we're going to go through that again. Well, you may just have to, an agreement with them, where you say, look, we're not going to talk about that issue until the end of the group after everybody's had a chance to talk. 
but it might hurt their feelings. So uh, it may be something you talk to them about privately. Uh, it may be something that uh, you just talk to the whole group. Say, if you've got a big issue, it's going to take five or ten minutes for you to get through it. We're just going to ask you to hold it to the end. And then let everybody get a chance to talk tonight, and then we'll go to those longer issues. If we run out of time, we'll stay over with you. Okay? And then they start talking in the long run story. That's sounding like one of those we need to hold to the end. So I've already said we might do that. Uh, that's some kind of ground rules. Um, a second thing we want to talk to you about, though, is just having some verbal tools at your disposal. If you're dealing with this in group, these are some things I think you need to work out in language for yourself and write it down and memorize it. What, what, what kind of things am I going to use to close down a conversation and redirect it somewhere else? It may sound something like this. Uh, let me find some eggs quiet so they won't have the full turf. Rob, Rob's pretty quiet. He won't think I'm picking on because he talks too much. Uh, Rob, thanks for sharing. Now let's hear from somebody else. Okay? Uh, now, if, if you're sitting there struggling for what to say, it's harder. You just need those phrases there and available for you. Well, when do you say that? Listen, the good thing is, God designed us, we have to breathe. Okay? So, he takes a breath, and he says, and I'm ready. I got my phrase ready. Rob, thanks for sharing. Well, what better, let's hear it from somebody else. See, so I have those well. Maybe uh, sound like this. Maybe I'd like to hear from somebody who hasn't spoke yet. Uh, if you're kind of going on, uh, in order to let everybody have time to talk tonight, uh, let's visit about this when the group's over. You may have to suffer, but not everybody has to. Uh, and then you just got to bite the bullet and do it. And, uh, and then you can minister to them. Was that a way? Yes? And uh, I, I have rabbit trails on here. Some well, I've gone down so many already. I probably didn't get rabbit trails. <laughs> but um, that is, that's a healthy kind of thing. It's just to be able to do that. Uh, so, but the workout ahead of time. What what kind of language are you going to use there? Again, I, I encourage you to go home and, and role play this. Okay, get with your spouse or get someone else in the group and just role play. And one of you start jabbering and the other one break in and, and use those words. I want you to hear them coming off your tongue. No, you can do that. Uh, will you possibly make somebody mad? <laughs> yes. For every person you make mad, you'll make ten others happy. <laughs> okay? I, and, and, and I will go the extra mile not to make them mad. But uh, you need to be able to redirect it. Now, that's all things you do in the group. Uh, some nonverbal tools that will help. If somebody's talking too much and you're the leader, they're normally going to be looking at you because they're talking to you. So one thing you can do is sit them beside you so they can't look at you. I'm serious. It's going to tone it down so you put them right beside you. And uh, it's real easy then. They're talking. It's real easy for you to turn away. <laughs> And I'm telling you, it breaks the train, okay? Because they're, they're going on and on, and, and they're looking at you, and they're watching you. Yes. And, uh, well, you start looking away to somebody else, what well, kind of breaks it? Uh, so, so those are nonverbal things. But then, finally, it, it may become necessary for you to talk to them outside of group, okay? And uh, you need somebody that's more sensitive and understanding than me to tell you how to do that. Uh, <laughs> but, but I'll make some suggestions, okay? Do not be a coward and talk to them in group as if you're not really talking to them like you're talking to the whole group. Because everybody in the room is going to know who you're talking to, including the person you're talking to. If you're going to talk to them, go ahead and bite the bullet Get them alone and talk to them. Uh, talking to them under the guise of talking to the whole group is not a healthy thing. Because the person sitting there going, everybody in the room knows they're talking to me. I'm the one that talks too much. <laughs> so this is not productive. They'll get their feelings hurt. 
Uh, however bad that private conversation will be, try and do it in the group is worse. Okay, so uh, go ahead, uh, talk to them privately. Uh, I suggest do not put them on the defensive. It's not a good conversation starter. Say, you know, you may not have ever noticed, but you just talk too much. <laughs> well, there's really nowhere for that to go except bad. Okay? So you don't want to, to put them on the defensive. I think you can carry on a conversation. And you just get them aside. Raymond's not, doesn't talk too much. I pick on him and say, Raymond, have you noticed there's some people in our group that they come and they, they show up and they leave and never say a single word? Have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. Well, uh, how do you think they feel when they show up and they, they never say a word? And they never share what they're thinking? And nobody ever hears them? I mean, how do you think they may feel week after week after week? Well, it's not like a rocket science feel like, well, why do you feel like they're really that important? And they're not adding anything. And, uh, and it's not even the biggest talker in the room is going to be going, because they like to talk. See, so they're going, well, that's not good. They're not getting to talk. And talking so much fun. <laughs> See, so what you're doing is you're very genuinely letting them know why is it a problem. It wouldn't be a problem when we get to heaven and you got 45 trillion years for your turn. There'll be some else's turn. You, got, you just got limited amount of time. So what's happening? The clock ones are getting shut down. Yeah, Doc? At the same time, when you're talking to somebody like that, people solicit their health in drawing those people. I like that. Let me put that in the outline. Oh! oh it is. <laughs> that would be little I, I, I. Yeah, this is where Donald pretend he didn't read that ahead of time. Thank you, Donald. Uh, so you just asked him the question. How can you, Raymond, how can you help me with this? How can you help me with this? I'm so good. So you let them, I, think, I appreciate that, that kind of segue me in there. Let them become part of the solution. Yeah. That's okay. Don spent two years in my living room, so he's entitled. He's entitled. Makes one no one. To, to what's driving? Why do they always have to be the center of attention? Why do they keep going over and over the same problem? And there's not one single answer, but there's something going on inside of them that's producing. Maybe what it is is they hide behind noise. As long as I can talk enough, I don't have to let you see the real me. It may be uh, insecurity. It may be they're trying to get accepted. Maybe may 50 different things, but part of the goal here is to help this person grow up in Christ and achieve some transformation. They may need, may, may need to try spiritual discipline, no silence. Try to go 24 hours without saying anything. Find out they can control their tongue. Their tongue doesn't have to control them. Uh, and that may be something that... Uh, the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. Some way to actually help them with the underlying issues. But you uh, do, do want to be positive. I mean, this person brings something to the table and uh, just affirm them for what they do well. And uh, you don't want to turn to just a big confirmation uh, or confrontation without confirmation. Uh, part of the you know, talking problems, like, you know, you've seen sometimes, and that's rabbit trees. 
Uh, we, we all do it. I just recognize it more when it's somebody else plays in the rabbit tree. Uh, when it's me, it's just a very perfect time. Uh, but sometimes we do have to say, hey, I just want to remind you, our group time's limited. Uh, it, it, it frustrates me, honestly, just to go and hear a bunch of chit-chat about stuff I don't care about. Uh, I, I, I come to a group for a reason. And uh, so, uh, you may just have to say, hey, our time's limited. Uh, why, why don't we visit about that after the group's over? But right now, let's get back to whatever you're back to. Uh, you may have to gently interrupt. I know we have a rule, don't interrupt. <laughs> Sometimes uh, cutting off a rabbit trail, you just kind of, you can't wait till it ends because it just keeps going around and around and around. One thing that's real helpful in this is when a person's telling a long story is, is have your ears open for a problem that you can pray for. You know, they're going on and on about a problem at work and somebody's not respecting them and, and, and look for an opportunity to say, well, that's interesting, Gloria. I, it sounds to me like we need to pray uh, that you would be able to respond to that person in Christ's life. Let's stop and pray for that right now. See? Now, I'm not being hokey. I'm not being real. I mean, I was looking for something that we need to lift up for prayer. We're going to stop and do it, and then what are we going to do next? We're going to move on. So we're going to move on. So be looking. What can, we, what can I interject a prayer for? I was listening to a guy in San Antonio teaching, uh, Glandian Carnian. Uh, Glandian was up our teaching. It was, uh, it was a conference, and there were people there, and we paid money to be there. And it was the craziest thing. He, he would ask a question, and he might uh, ask, and somebody would share something. He'd go, well, Morris, how about if you would just go ahead and, and pray for Martha right now, and, and we'll, we'll agree with you. I was like, he's not supposed to be doing that. He's supposed to be teaching. <laughs> But right in the midst of it, prayer doesn't always have to come at the end. And in fact, uh, sometimes it's more appropriate to come at the moment. Have you ever had anybody share something that's just like gut-wrenching and they're, they're crying a little bit and, uh, and you're just waiting for them to finish so you can give your price report about how you got a new car this week? <laughs> well, how do you transition? I mean, they're just talking about their mom's dying of cancer and everybody's sitting there. It's kind of an awkward moment. Like, what do you say next? Hey, I can't even say next. Let's just stop and pray now. Let's lift that up right now. Maris, would you mind leading us in prayer? We'll just pray with you. See, so what have we done? We've eliminated that awkward moment. We've gone ahead and brought it before God. We don't have to wait to the end and hope somebody remembers to pray for her mom. Just right now, stop. Do it. But also gives us a chance to transition. Because uh, really, Donna does need to tell everybody about the new car she got this week. And, and that's important. And she's here. She's got something we want to rejoice with her about. And that allows us to do. You didn't really get a new car, did you? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just a couple more things, and we're going to shut down and eat dessert. Uh, we're going to spend some time on this sometime in the future. Let me just say this. Jesus was a master at asking good questions. He just asked some great questions. I encourage you as leaders to start thinking about questions instead of answers. Jesus answered very few questions. It's interesting. He usually responded to questions. But sometimes... Your system is perfectly designed to get the results you're getting. If you start out group with this, well, what's going on this week? Well, get ready for the rapid trail. I mean, just ask them what's going on. And uh, they're going to tell you. I, I hate to start rattling out examples. Someone goes, oh, that happened in our group. No. I, 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 that's just not a good question to start group with. Well, what's happening? Well, they'll tell you and tell you and tell you. It'll have nothing to do with the price of tea in China. Well, maybe that shouldn't be the first question. How many people this week have really connected with God in a significant way that changed your life? Somebody raise a hand. And you ask them to share. What happened? Tell us how you connected with God. So that, that's a pretty good question. Well, what's going on this week? Anybody got anything good to talk about? No, they will. So be thinking. Be thinking. What are the kind of questions 
If you don't like what they're talking about, what do you want them to talk about? See, in your question, I'll be taking them there. How many people read something in this week's reading plan that really allowed you to see God in a different way than you'd seen him before? That's why I raised their hand and start talking. How about emails? Emails? Anything this week? See? You don't like where they're going. You're the leader. So be thinking about where do, I, where do I want it to go? Now, I'm not going to write out the questions because the Holy Spirit needs to be doing that for you. And they're not the same questions every week. You mean you might have to pray, spend some time quiet with God, listen, hear what God's saying? I mean, your opening question may be, how many people, is there somebody here that got offended with a co-worker and you're having trouble letting it go this week? Well, that person's not going to start telling you about the new story of the mall. See, the Holy Spirit put that question on your heart. That's called leadership. And it requires a lot more than straightening up the living room before they walk in. So, take the lead. Take the lead. And then, model, model, model. Uh, avoid direct trails yourself. And when you do, Pop, just recognize it and pop and say, I'm sorry, I, I got us off on that. That doesn't have anything to do with what we're going to talk about tonight. Don't forgive me. Let's get back on the track. Okay? <clears throat> That's not so hard. I've spent most of my life apologizing. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because we're at 8 o'clock, we're out of time, I'm guessing desserts. Uh, thanks so much to the people that bring them, and thanks to Terry and Perry who uh, lined that up and made sure we have some. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do, rather than us doing it here in, as a group, is uh, go through and role play some of this stuff. And some of you are going, oh, that sounds a little hokey. Do it. Okay? Allow yourself to hear the words roll off. Okay? Allow yourself to use the example. So you're ready. You're quick. That's training. And then uh, we, we may have an opportunity in the future we'll talk about that some more. Okay, Lord God, I thank you that you have uh, created this situation with people and you've created us as people to work with people. And sometimes it's messy and sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes folks get their feelings hurt. Sometimes people are misunderstood. But somehow, God, this is all part of the plan we would learn what it is to really love the way Jesus loved. And so much of this, God, I don't know, it's just about love. And when it's grounded in love, it's hard to go wrong. And if it's not grounded in love, it's impossible to be wrong. So help us, God, first and foremost, to look at people through the eyes of Jesus. To see them as eternal beings with an everlasting destiny in your great universe. To look at them and see them as people created in your image with all their warts and bobos and hickeys. People created in your image. To see them, Lord, as you saw them as you hung on the cross. And love them. So help us as leaders just to remove the obstacles that might get in the way of you, Holy Spirit, doing your work in their lives that we can see day after day that gradual transformation into Christ's life. Christ's likeness in every aspect of our life. We recognize that it's serious business to be about our Father's business. But it's so fun. It's so rewarding. It has eternal consequences, God, that I cannot imagine ignoring or disregarding. So I bless these people. I bless them with wisdom and insight, with sensitivity and firmness. I bless them with an ear to hear both what you're saying and what the people they minister to are saying. All in your precious name. Amen.